Hello. All right. I, are we live? I think we're live. Are we live? Pub Let's see. Can anyone, uh, if you're on the chat, thanks for joining us. If you don't mind just confirming that you all can hear us, that you can see us all right, that would be great. That'd be great. All right. Thank you for that. Kimberly, thank you. Eric, all right. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah, yeah. Everyone. We're, we're going to um, give everyone a few, we're probably starting in about two minutes uh, before we really dive into the presentation. But obviously, we're super excited to have you all here today. John, John and Amelia, we'll do intros in just a, just a few minutes here. Um, let's see. Got a comment coming in. Bikram, looking forward to hearing this. We're super looking forward to sharing it, totally. Totally, totally, totally. Um, let's see. Good point, Jennifer. <laughs> I can't see Jennifer's point yet, but I'm sure it was a good one. Um, I saw it, but it disappeared. Yes, you must have taken it back. Um, it was, why doesn't everyone introduce themselves and tell us where you're coming from? <laughs> oh, yeah, please add that. If, if you can um, add to the chat where you might be on this fine day, whether it's in your market or hopefully out on the road somewhere fun. Love to hear that always. Um, we do have a San Diego, all right. Still never been. Columbia, all right. Portland. Someone's got to be from Seattle, right? Are there any Seattleites out there? There we go. Seattle. Thanks, Eric. There we go. Eric, is that true? Let me see. I, I can only see your first name. All right, we got Asheville. Oh, cool, Sydney. we got most, we got many continents represented. I love that. I love. Yeah, what time that. is it in Australia right now? You were you were on Australia time at three in the morning today, Andrew. Tell us what time it is in Australia right now. It will depend. Australia is a large continent. First of all, <laughs> it covers multiple time zones. I um I was on, I did a pitch to a group that was mostly on the East Coast. Um, and it started at three thirty in the morning. It was the first webinar of the day, but it was a blast. Turns out Australians in the evening are a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> all right, everyone. Oh, 6 a.m. from Glennis and Gold Coast. Amazing. Ooh. So we're going to just we'll just give one more minute because we, we did have uh, quite a few folks sign up. And um, looks like we got 30 folks here so far. Uh, if you do have friends who don't make it today, you can always – we will be sharing a video of this presentation afterwards. However, during the presentation, too, we're, we're going to – Yes, show you the comp sets and take you through the newest product from Wheelhouse, but we might have time for a few other cool kind of sneak peek, either sneak previews or just cool things we're really excited to share with you all. So um, we will get we will get moving in just a minute, but we do think we thank you for showing up. Will the base price change if you stay at my Airbnb? Um, let's talk about deals and discounting strategy, okay, Yair? Um, all depends when we book. Um, and yes, we do have a we do have an intelligent base price model that will compare our bookings at your place versus others and uh, make some adjustments. It's a, it's a it is a true part of the ML model of that wheelhouse. Um, okay, all it's it's one oh three. I think uh, I think it's time to dive in. And um, bef before we actually start, even though uh, John Amelia, why don't why don't you do quick intros of yourself too? You all will be presenting at some parts today. Amelia, why don't we start with you? Share a little bit about yourself, just so everyone knows uh, who you are, and then we'll get around to the materials in just a second. Sure, happy to. Um, I'm Amelia, I'm a lead on the sales um, and client management team here at Wheelhouse. So I mostly partner with our larger clients to position them for success by leveraging some of our advanced data and technology um, to help them achieve their revenue goals, that's my main goal, um, and really future-proofing their, their pricing strategy. Um, I love working with people who are currently scaling their portfolio or on, um, are as excited about our new products as we are. So excited to get to know you all better. Sweet. And is Amelia at usewheelhouse.com or is there, we'll, we'll share emails later if anyone wants to reach out for questions or scaling questions, et cetera. John, share a little bit about yourself. Sure. How's it going, guys? My name is John DeRoulet. Some of you may recognize me from other webinars, different facial hair, same red hat. Um, but uh, I've recently joined the Wheelhouse team, and I'm helping clients um, understand their revenue strategy and help them uh, in the finer details of finding out if or finding out how Wheelhouse can be your solution and also helping with your revenue strategy in general. My background is uh, I've been in the industry for 
um, over eight years. I was the revenue director at Stay Alfred for a very, very long time, and now I'm looking to uh, help work with you all and then help you put your, your best foot forward for your product. Yep. And we're all going to present a little bit about this new Comset product today. So we will get more time to hear from Amelia and John. And for those who've been coming to some of our revenue management courses of late, uh, you would recognize John Deverlay from there too. And we ended up having so much fun building materials and sharing more about doing, doing revenue management that John, when did you join us? Four weeks ago? Yeah, it's been about a month now. Yeah. And I've already talked so, to a number of you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> incredibly creative with revenue management strategies and applying this and leveraging wheelhouse in ways that candidly were new to even us when we started to see how John was using them using the platform. So lots of fun things. So with that, we're going to dive into some materials. I'm going to share my screen for a second here. Good news, everyone. I'm going to be talking for the least amount today, actually, even though I am going to get us started here. And everyone can see my screen. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see it. OK, great. Um, and we're just going to do the slideshow for just a second. Yes, you're at the wheelhouse comp set introduction. This is just for customers. This is the newest product from Wheelhouse. Um, so when I think of Wheelhouse, when we think of Wheelhouse now, we really think about it as three plus products in one. We are moving towards a couple of new products that will be live uh, probably in the next three months as well that will add to this suite. But um, this dynamic pricing, probably the tool the best. We have Marker Reports, a tool that some of some people have been really, really familiar with and some are still learning, but a really cool tool that continues to progress. And then the comp set tool is what we're going to be stepping through today. And I think someone's on, maybe not a mute, if you could uh, mute yourself just because it's a little loud, that'd be great. Is that my, is that my microphone? Okay. And all these products are easy to set up, customize, and automate. The, the comp set is one of our, um, it's probably the most advanced tool we built to date, which is why we want to take a little extra time kind of stepping through it. And we probably will be doing a few more of these webinars because as we'll see, there are a lot of different components of it and it can be really, really powerful when uh, set up and kind of used correctly. So the point of today's presentation is first to answer the question of what is a comp set and then to show, cool, how can it help you earn more revenue, right? And so some folks on this call are likely familiar with comp sets or benchmarking or other ways to kind of look at other properties near you to price your property well, but we're gonna show you how we're gonna be doing on Wheelhouse. And we did want to note and say a quick thank you to a current Wheelhouse customer, Black Swan. Um, we are actually going to step through a real account today, right? So sometimes when you create an account on Wheelhouse, you might have seen a test list in your demo listing. We actually thought it'd be more valuable to step through an actual live property with some comp sets that actually, comp sets have been custom designed for today, show you a little bit more um, and, and to modify them live with you all. But we did want to give a shout out to our friends at Black Swan. They have premium inventory and multiple partners, super well-run business. You can reach out to them at blackswantravel.com and they have been kind enough to let us drive through a real portfolio today. So do appreciate that. I think it'll make this presentation a little bit more fun. So what are we gonna cover today? We're gonna cover first, I just get to do, I get to cover the coolest features. We're kind of gonna do reverse order. We're gonna show you the coolest features. Then we're gonna show you how to create your own comp set and then we're going to actually show you the comp set dashboard, which is the place if you have multiple properties, you'll be able to see your whole portfolio at once. And should we have time, should we have time, even though we think this will probably slip into a second webinar, um, we will. Uh, we want to show you how you can start exporting data, right? I think for those who have been coming to some of our revenue management talks, we've talked a lot about how important it is for Wheelhouse to put you more in control of data this year. Uh, you might have started to see export buttons popping up everywhere on the Wheelhouse site. For example, on our market reports, you can now export data. On our comp set, you'll be able to export data. Exporting of data means taking data, putting it in your control, and modifying it in a bunch of different ways, right? So we do think there's a lot of cool things you could potentially do, and we're excited to see what you do when we pair you with the data. So with that, I'm actually going to stop that presentation. We're going to dive right into the product. I just need to stop screen share for a second. And um, I guess the other thing to note is, we do have teammates who are kind of keeping an eye on chat. Uh, if you do have questions that they come up, feel free to throw them in the chat or send them our way. No guarantee we can stop at the time, but we will try to answer questions either in live time via chat. Maybe we can address in the presentation and certainly afterwards as well. Okay. Now to the my screen. All right. We're live. Oh yeah. Welcome to your comp set. 
Um, okay, so again, I, we are actually starting from uh, usually the end result of where you would go. And that means this is, uh, think of this as a live comp set. You can notice, I obviously know this because it's something we've been working on, but there are 32 listings in this comp set. You can see across the top here, we're actually showing you, uh, in this case, your listing versus your comp set. And you can compare kind of month over month performance or rank. So this, this tab is just your really quick snapshot. And you'll notice you can scan ahead quite a, quite a ways in the future to see, you know, if you just want to skip a month ahead or two, you can see how your performance is shaping up again against that comp set, right? Now, again, I, sh I wanted to show you the coolest features of comp set, just so uh, over the course of this presentation, you're going to learn how to get to these things uh, on your own comp set. But some of our favorite things, uh, number one is the calendar, right? So this is a, uh, it's a way for you, once you've created a comp set, to really look ahead at the different pricing strategies that are unfolding near you, right? So you might do this behavior online now. You might go look at other Airbnb properties, variable properties, or other properties near you and see how they're pricing and leverage that information to run your business differently or better. Well, now you can do this in a much faster fashion. You can look out at a year to see that pricing strategy unfold. You can also look at performance, right? So even though this screen might be a little small for you, when, when you do have it up on your own screen, you'll be able to see this. And you can drive along right now, right? If you have an account, if you're a pro account, you can go look at your own comp sets right now, right? So you can feel free to drive along with us. But whether it's revenue, occupancy, we kind of have kind of this overview tab. You might have noticed if you have really eagle eyes that there's this little drop down here that allows you actually to dive into all of these metrics much more precisely. Meaning now I can go look at revenue and I can, um, some of the blanks here, we're looking actually back in time, no guarantee that we'll have data looking, looking back. We'll share more about why in a little bit, but looking forward, you can see all the revenue that's on the books. You, should, you can see things like lead time, length of stay, revenue per available room, et cetera. So a lot you can see here, uh, I'm not gonna tell you about exportability yet because we're saving that a little bit till the end. Suffice to say, there's an easy way to get a lot of information out of this into Excel or into whatever spreadsheet you use to look at data. Um, two other tabs. So you might have noticed here, and this is true in the market reports too. We have an overview market report, but then we have a, uh, the same kind of UX here, which allows you to dive into a lot of charting. So in this case, I'm looking at upcoming. I can look up to a year in advance at various occupancy or asking rates within my comp set. Again, a lot here. Um, we are going to keep moving quickly through this because we have a lot to cover, but something to explore. And you can also look at historical performance as well. And in this case, you again might want to look at lead time of just seeing how your comp set, what's the lead time at your comp set, right? So this is a different type of charting. It's a distribution chart, but it's showing what percentage of your kind of, of your comp set that you'll learn how to customize in just a few minutes. How are they doing from a performance perspective across a wide variety of metrics? So those are a few of our favorite features, right? It's the calendar where you can see all the pricing. It's the performance that allows you to really put into context for either yourself or for any clients you might be reporting to, allow you to understand how your business and kind of how your pricing strategy might want to evolve. And then the upcoming historical tabs are really cool things. You might also, if you have Eagle Eyes again, see that there's a little green box here. Uh, around the events tab. This means it's admin only for now. That usually means it's a couple weeks from going into beta testing. Uh, so yes, you will be able to see all your local events uh, in a really easy fashion here as well coming up. Can't, I'm not gonna sneak preview that today. Suffice to say, it's almost here. And with that, um, I'm gonna hand over, I know that was a really quick walkthrough. We're actually gonna come back to this, but Amelia, um, Cool, I've seen some of the things I can see on my comp set. How do I create a comp set? Take me through that, please. I would love to show okay. you. Okay, take it away. Share my screen. Okay, good to go. Okay, great. Um, so, hi, thanks. Uh, I'm excited to show some of the um, super cool things we have in the comp set tab and kind of how to tailor in your personalized competitive set. But just in case there's anybody that's not familiar with their dashboard, I want to give um, just the world's fastest demo walkthrough of um, some of our main tabs here, just so you can get a bit more familiar and see how it feeds into the, the comps tab. Um, so quickly here we have the calendar view where you can see on a day-to-day -day basis, pricing recommendations, um, where you have bookings, 
um, your personal settings on here. And then, um, of course, we flag local events, things like that. And then you're also able to edit these pricings um, easily, either on a percentage basis or flat rate. So a lot of easy ways to edit the pricing here. Uh, I'll quickly walk through our settings tab where you're able to edit the base price, um, adjust your weekend or seasonality strategies, uh, or you can move over to the strategy tab and um, update some settings on your dynamic minimum stays or far future premium, one of our newer features that we're getting a lot of amazing feedback on. Um, so in the interest of time, I'm going to kind of uh, skip over some of these cool other tabs you can check out um, on your own time and we will get into comps, the reason we are all here today. So we're diving into one individual listing here. So comps brings you to kind of the dashboard for this listings uh, competitive sets. So you'll see that we have the one recommended set that's automatically generated for each of your listings. And then you'll see all of the personalized sets that you've created here as well. Um, so before we dive into how to edit the personalized set, I would love to kind of chat through um, a bit more of this recommended set, why it's locked, um, the data science behind it, and mostly why you should trust it and why, um, why it's good to build off of. So I'm going to lead us here to our blog post um, on the comp sets, and I'm sure we'll share this in the chat so it's easy to find. Um, this kind of goes into the back end data science on how exactly we come up with this recommended set, and again, why you should build off of it, um, and why it's specifically tailored to your, um, to your listing. So I'm going to leave this um, pretty chart here for you to feast your eyes on as I kind of explain how the whole pricing, um, how the whole comp set to generation focuses right on this. Um, so let's look into how Wheelhouse determines your top competitors. Um, given the high variability in the short term rental space of supply, um, it can be tricky to determine exactly who you should be competing against in your market, um, aside from general assumptions. So. We found the best way to come up with your competitive set is to focus on three areas. So one of the areas being proximity. Of course, you want to be able to assume that those listings that are super close to you can automatically be included in your recommended set. And most of the time, you would be correct. Um, and same with features. So say you have a three bedroom and you can it's usually safe to assume that other three bedrooms in your area are going to be included in your set. Um, but what makes Wheelhouse really unique and why this recommended set is locked and unable to be edited is because throughout the year, Wheelhouse is going to update this recommended set based on seasonality and market supply. So for instance, um, your competitors are going to change season to season. So who you're competing against in the summer is going to differ from who you're competing against in the wintertime. Um, and so we're going to analyze that um, and update accordingly. So we're constantly analyzing your booking patterns, which is the third feature. So we have proximity features, and most importantly, and most uniquely, booking patterns um, to gauge who is booking at the same time as you and then updating your competitive set accordingly. So when you're looking at that initial recommended competitive set, you're really looking at what this chart represents is where um, all three of those factors, so features, proximity, and booking patterns all overlap the most to create a really precise set. And so a bit more on that, these initial sets are meant to be um, a bit too large, just given that they include everybody who could maybe be um, considered a competitor. And then you're able to trim it out from there based on precise market knowledge um, from areas that you've probably been in for years and know like the back of your hand or just more of a human eye on you know, checking on the Airbnb listings and checking quality of um, amenities, things like that. So with that said, um, that is the recommended set. And then we'll dive into this um, pre-made um, personalized set. So if you wanted to create your own set, it's incredibly easy. You just throw on a title and then you build it out just how um, I'm about to show you. So let's dive into this webinar comp set. So here, as Andrew mentioned, you're going to see the metric highlights for the data pulled from your competitive set specifically. And as we include and remove listings from this set, um, you're going to see this updated automatically and instantaneously. So you have that data reflected um, very quickly. So initially, you go to add listings. And this is how you're going to edit your set. Um, so again, we're in this one competitive set. And this is the current set. So this is the one that you're building. And then here are the options that you can pull from. And there's um, a few ways that you can add um, listings up here. So you can, of course, toggle on between miles and meters, personally prefer miles. Um, and so you're able to kind of eyeball this interactive map. 
um, you can zoom in and see that some of the dots are a bit darker than others, and that means that they're already in your competitive set. Um, so say you're eyeballing this and you're familiar with the Nashville area specifically, and you know that this area is something that you want to be competing up against. So you're able to select this listing and then um, add it to your competitive set here, just like that. And it's really that simple. Um, so you're able to eyeball this map or you're able to filter this whole set. So you can see that it's pulling pages and pages of different listings. And so say you're looking for additional one bedrooms or two bedrooms to compare to. Um, you're able to filter that out and then um, include, um, include the same way that you would. So you just select and then add the selections to your set. And so once you're feeling pretty good about this personalized set, you're able to hide these options down below so that you can get um, a wider view of this set. And say you kind of built this out um, offhand and you want to tailor it in a little bit. So we just walked through how to include some listings, but let's see how to um, exclude some listings. So say you're looking through and you've decided that you really only want to be compared to apartments and houses in your neighborhood. You're able to um, filter by the type here. So I'm going to go ahead and show all listings that are everything except for a house or an apartment and apply filter. So I don't want to be compared to a cabin or hotel. So I'm going to go ahead and select these and very easily remove them. And from there, you're also able to hide this map. So say you wanted to look at a few more of these attributes and say you want to take a step further and you're not really interested in comparing your listings to anybody with um, you know, under three stars. So I'm going to go in and select these and remove them from your competitive set very easily. Um, once you're done and you're feeling pretty good about your personalized competitive set, you can turn off the editing and it automatically locks this in. Um, as Andrew mentioned, we don't have time to show you everything that you can do with this data, uh, but I do just want to show you exactly how easy it is to export so that you're able to run your own analysis, deep dive, um, create your own pivot charts, do whatever you would like. So you simply select all of the data in any of these tabs that Andrew walked through. You can right click, copy with headers, and simply drop it in to a spreadsheet. So it's really that simple and just something to keep in mind as John is walking through the rest of the features that it's all incredibly exportable and um, there are hundreds of ways to use this. So we're really excited to see what you all come up with. Um, but with that, I will hand it back over to John. For walking us through it, sure. What, what, what um, was hidden just above the screen when Amelia was adding and removing listings is we'll auto recompute all those all the metrics in real time, right? Mm -hmm. So it's you kind of can adjust and kind of see what happens, but um, pretty cool stuff, pretty powerful. And and wh what's the limit on listings? Are we at right now? Is it fifty listings in a comp set? Is the max right now? Yep. Uh, right. For for those in the audience, like remember this is comp set beta. We want to hear from you all what will make this comp set better, what what will make it easier for you. If you want more than 50 listings, let us know. We actually really think 50 is kind of the right max number where you start to kind of get a diffusion of value by adding a lot more properties. It will take longer to load should you add like 200 properties to your comp set. You might not be able to zoom in on the data as much as you'd like to, but that's a, an aspect of this that we want to hear from you. So um, again, any questions you have, any comments you want to leave in the chat, what's confusing, what's exciting, what's interesting, all helpful information for us to take comp sets to the next level for you. So do keep sending your ideas our way. Thank you, Amelia. John, let's take it away. Off mute, maybe. Can't hear you quite yet. <laughs> Can't hear you quite yet. Am I muted? There you go. It's weird. You yeah. Okay. Hey guys, sorry about that. Um, I was going to say I'll answer some of your questions while it's loading, but I think you can see my screen. I can address a few of them real quick. Um, Thomas, uh, the data at the top, we'll actually go through a little bit on this screen. We kind of started from the most granular level because we know that there's a lot of use cases there, but um, I'm about to show you guys the CompSet dashboard, which kind of aggregates a number of uh, data points for you from your entire portfolio. And you can use this dashboard to both get into your individual properties to make changes or to get into your individual comp sets to start digging deeper. Um, on top of that, when you are looking at the map view, you are able to click onto the, the names of the 
listings and it'll pop you over to where that listing is located uh, and what channel it is. It can be really useful if you want to take a look at the pictures and really see if that property is a good comparison for your own, um, your own portfolio. Um, so let me dive into a little bit deeper on this CompSet dashboard. First things first, you can get to this CompSet dashboard by going over here to CompSet Intel up on the top bar and just clicking it and it's going to load this dashboard with all of your listings into it. The first thing I want to point out, because I have some filters already set, is up in this upper right corner, uh, there is a little education tool, so you can click that and uh, get a little overview of what you're looking at here if you forget what I say. But um, you can do a number of different filtering options for your portfolio, because we know some people maybe only have one, two, ten units, but some people that we're talking to may have hundreds, if not thousands, and you only want to look at certain things at certain times. Right now, I just have a few filters here. I'm looking at Nashville properties, of which I have three pages. Uh, and I know in this portfolio that there's only one bedroom unit, so I don't really need to do anything. And they're all turned on for pricing, so I don't need to filter out anything else. In addition to that, just like in the other um, screens, you can choose what months you're going to look at. You can see that this is updating the data extremely, extremely quickly where we have data available. And that's how you're going to be able to get a snapshot access to a wide range of the health of your portfolio. So let's dig into a little bit more about the constituent parts of what is actually appearing in this grid. So the first thing I want to point out is these data points are data points that you'll recognize from the individual listing level. Um, we're looking at occupancy, asking rate, nightly rate, rev par, lead time, and length of stay. If you've been familiar with revenue management uh, and been doing a lot of research, you'll be pretty familiar with some of these terms. But if you're not, I'll go through it real quick. Occupancy is essentially what has been booked. Asking rate is all of the future rates that are being posted out there that haven't been sold. Nightly rate is going to be the nights that have been sold within this time frame. RevPAR is a calculation that's used really well to understand performance. It's basically the total revenue you have in a time period divided by the number of maximum available days. So for most months, what we'd be looking at is you take your total revenue and divide it by the number of days in the month, and it becomes a really excellent benchmark, particularly when looking in hindsight, but can also be used when looking in foresight to understand how your performance is at a top level compared to everything else. We also show average lead time as well as average length of stay. Now, I think what's really, really cool about this um, in terms of gauging the health of your portfolio and your individual listings is going to be how we show this data. Not only are we going to show this data and these key kind of high level statistics for the month that's selected for your individual unit can be very helpful if you're just trying to understand how you're doing, but we're also going to show underneath it how it relates to your comp set. So you'll recall up here, I had filter settings set. Right now, this one is set to comp rank. So it's going to tell me where I'm placing in the comp set I've selected. Very, very good at a glance to get an idea if you're looking at multiple listings of what listings you might need to take a little deeper look at. And also what listings um, maybe you may be able to maximize revenue more in the future because of where they're placing. In addition to that, you can switch this to comp average, see that it updates really quick, and it's just going to tell you those key statistics for the comp set. I'll touch on that a little bit more in a minute because I think there's some interesting use cases involved here. Um, but when you're just trying to get an idea of how your properties are faring, this is going to be the place to go. Now, the next final piece that I think is really important is Amelia showed you how we have both a recommended comp set, but you can also create a number of individual comp sets. Those comp sets can be toggled in this column here set, oops, well, I just sorted it. So sorry about that. Um, I'll go to this one. Um, you can select those comp sets right here, and it's going to automatically update the data from that comp set that you've selected. So one of the interesting use cases that I can give you an example is you'll see here that on Sobro One, One Bedroom and Shower, I have a custom comp set that I built called Sobro Portfolio. All of these listings I know are in the same building. So what I've done is I've actually just made a comp set of all my own properties. And now I can see if I switch this to comp average, the average performance of my portfolio, and I can actually use that to compare any of the individual units to. This unit's doing pretty well. You know, I've got a 92, what units are doing not so well? 
80 rev par, kind of a low occupancy here. Maybe I want to go do some work on this uh, Sobro 19. So that's one use case that you can use for uh, having multiple sets in the comp set and then using the dashboard to understand very high level metrics that inform your strategy. In addition to that, I've also built another comp set over here that's uh, one bedroom downtown comps. I chose a bunch of one bedrooms that I thought were really good. Uh, it's a much, it's a smaller comp set but they're properties that I really want to follow. They're, they're people I think are really big competitors. Either I know the other managers and I just want to compete with them and show them that I'm doing better, or I think they're properties that, you know, my property is definitely worth as much as theirs and I want to know how they're doing. And so if I set this to show the statistics for that comp set, I can now compare anything on my dashboard to these statistics to get an idea of how I'm performing. In addition to that, you can also set them all to either your individual comp sets um, or your recommended comp sets, just to get an idea of the overall rank and health as you're scanning through on a consistent basis to understand what properties you maybe want to make some changes to or what properties you know, maybe have an indication that they need to have a strategy change. So overall, this dashboard, even though it's the last thing we're showing you, is probably going to be one of the first places you go. You can use it to get straight to your comp sets and your units, which is an excellent place to be. And from in terms of the key takeaways for how this is going to help you, it gives you the option to see the health of your listings at a glance, to extract key performance statistics from your own portfolio as well as in the marketplace, and easily access your individual units when you want to start making changes in your portfolio. <laughs> I wrote down slow down, so I'll have to time it and compare. No, it to this is good. I mean, I, ideally, we actually get everyone out of, out a little bit early today. I think we've had some really good questions that are coming in on the chat window, and I think um, we can take some time to to address them. I, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna John, if you don't mind, I'm gonna share my screen again. Yeah. Okay, and let's let's go to. Um, we had a question come in and again, send us, send us questions. If you want, this webinar is really for you all to, uh, we're, we're really excited to see how you use comp sets. We're going to try to do our best of just showing, um, how, what we like from them. So can you all, you, you all can see my screen again. Okay. So there, there's a question from Eli and I, and I do think this, this could be, um, we're probably going to need to candidly change the color of this recommended set and, and kind of, the fact that this is a locked icon could be initially confusing to folks. So again, the recommended comp set, the reason we lock it is because we're constantly analyzing who your competitive set is and how it's evolving. Think of a new listing that just came on yesterday. What if it's two blocks away? Well, on our next analysis, we're going to pick up that property. And we're going to add it into your comp set. And so because of that reason, because we're kind of uh, doing some work for you, we lock that comp set. Uh, so someone had asked, if when they clicked on one of the comps, they couldn't see the add and remove. I'm going to assume that might have been, and you, you'll notice this. When you're actually on the, the lock comps, and you cannot actually add uh, your own comps, right? You can't add additional comps. So you'll see everything that Wheelhouse recommends as your competitors here and all the stats, and it's more of a place to learn. Now, like John was showing and, and, and what we were trying to show is you can um, also create a new comp set. And one kind of other sneaky hidden feature here that's pretty cool is you can actually, and we'll just do this live, live demo of cool feature. Uh, test. You can start from scratch. So you could just start from say, hey, I totally disagree with wheelhouse. I'm going to come in and build our own comp set. Honestly, if you do that, we would love to hear from you, right? We want to hear which people you didn't think were your competitors and why, and we want to, well, we can accept their data to, to, to kind of have a discussion around it. Right. But you could either build off of your recommended comp set. You could, if you had built other comp sets already, you could start with those as well. Right? So if I just clicked here, this is webinar comp set, I'm basically going to duplicate it. And what you can see here, close this box now, you can see that just like the webinar comp set, which we copied, this is live. It's now, you're able to manipulate it. If you want to delete the comp set, super easy to do. Word of warning right now, we don't have undo on that deleting a comp set. So if you do create and delete a comp set, 
uh, you will have to start building it from scratch again. At some point, we'll be able to do some history and some revision stuff. Right now, we do not. So if you do put a lot of time into it, please do be cautious with that. Uh, something we can certainly improve. Um, and the other thing I just did want to flag where tests uh, built from Rex, if you did want to start from a recommended comp set, if you created this set, uh, you can now go into, sometimes it'll take a minute to load. Let's just try it. Might as well. Okay, there we go. Um, you can now come in and start to click and remove certain listings. So you duplicated the comp set. You basically create a new one. You leverage the recommended one. And now you can add and remove listings to your, however you like, right? So there are a couple ways to, to kind of slice and dice this. We are also, like other questions we're still asking about this product include um we assume that the ability to build three additional comp sets is plenty but we don't know for sure right we do think there are cases and kind of in early testing we've seen people want to create that summer and winter set we've seen people want to create just a you know say they have a two bedroom they only want to see the two bedrooms um so we assume that three is enough more might become even unwieldy so we are limiting the ability to create new comp sets to three additional ones right now, but we are curious about that. Um, and there are obviously other kind of aspects of, of the comps that we're really interested to, to get your feedback on. I think, um, whereas Amelia showed how you could export the attributes, I just want to show one other kind of cool feature here. So you might have seen me click the select all button. I'm going to right click and it's going to take a little, it's going to take a second. So maybe two seconds, three seconds. Here we go. Four. Five, what I'm doing right now is it's, it's actually pulling up a huge amount of information, huge amount of data. Oops. Let me just, there. it, it took a, a second there where I was able to, now I can copy all this data. Remember that's 365 days of calendar data across 50 properties. And if I copy this data, if I did just go to sheets, I'll just show something that you might be interested in, in looking at. I'm hoping you can still see my screen. I believe you can. I'm pasting in the data here and we're actually going to modify it together. Uh, I'm going to delete that first column and I'm going to delete these two columns. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to grab these top three properties only. And I'm going to create a chart. Now this is a little bit advanced, so we will be making other onboarding videos, educational videos, and blog posts. But now I've got all the data exported and I can start to play with the numbers, right? Now you could write a revenue strategy against the comp set and see how it would compare. Uh, you might wanna share this with teammates. You might wanna again send, hey, here's the pricing strategy I'm employing against my competitive set. There's a lot of things you might be able to do with this. So if you do find yourself becoming a little bit of an expert in comp sets and playing around and exploring the information in this fashion, we would love to hear from you. We'd love to hear from you. That's exactly what we want. So um, there are some pretty cool features here um, that are not obvious. I think, again, another really fun place to explore. Um, these charts are similar to what you'd see on the market report, but just in case, uh, just to make sure folks know, you can look at different time ranges on these charts. So you can, um, I'm looking at upcoming, but I'm now looking at the next year, right? And I'm seeing both, both current and expected in some cases. The asking rate is, is really, really interesting. And I can click on these to hide my pricing or show my pricing. But now I can start to see when are my competitors rising prices? And double check us, right? Make sure that wheelhouse, the strategy that you have in your mind that wheelhouse is building for you lines up with your expectations, right? We really do think wheelhouse is best when we combine our data, our software, our analytics with you and your strategy. So uh, you can slice and dice in a bunch of ways. I personally find the daily view the most valuable, but if it was too much information, you could look at daily or weekly, or sorry, weekly or monthly pricing. Again, all this is exportable, right? Click to export, you can export it as an image. Uh, oh, on this chart, you'll soon be able to export it as, um, as a CSV or as an Excel file as well. So lots of things we can do. Um, now, because you all are here, I also just wanted to flag. Um, so Wheelhouse has been pushing, we, we've been um, pushing a lot of new products at the door lately, right? In January, we launched, uh, kind of December slash January, we launched the new Wheelhouse, uh, more improved portfolio performance. Um, hopefully you found that to be a little bit, uh, the site a little bit easier and faster to use. Um, market reports, 
went out the door really in December and there's something that people are using. Comp sets is a third major product release. Um, we also have, uh, just as a fun sneak preview, I wanted to, I was asking the team, should we show this today? It's like, why not? Let's show. So you might notice that there's a slightly different URL here, right? So there's this code in front of it. Uh, and what Wheelhouse is about to push live is um, we've been really focused on how larger portfolios are going to be able to, to, to scale most effectively. And, and part of that is speed and ease of use of Wheelhouse, right? Really usable UI, really solid data, ability to make changes, and then a site that is really performant. And so while this is still in testing, we actually kicked it over to our CS team to start testing today. Um, what you might notice is it's pretty snappy and fast. Um, and this will actually, this code base is going to be applied across the whole site, but it's kind of instant loads of all these pages. Now, these are the content pages. Your dashboard might load a little slower. If I show you, if I, if I was to go log in, because this is in testing, you'd actually you'd see an error when I hit the dashboard. I can show you the markets. It's still in development. But uh, we made a really big commitment uh, starting about 12 months ago to redesign all of Wheelhouse, the things you don't see at Wheelhouse, to make it a whole lot faster, more performant for you all too. So we're super excited to be almost able to share that as well. But anyway, with that, I think we'll pause. Um, if there are any other questions that have come in with chat, we'll take, call it four more minutes to answer a few questions. Unfortunately, we can't bring folks up on stage. It's just a limitation of the software here. If you do have chat questions, we can try to address them in chat, or otherwise we'll let you get back to either your day or exploring comp sets more or whatever else. But we sincerely appreciate your time. Kimberly, no, we do not integrate with Escapia yet. We are in conversations. There might be a really cool way to get an integration with Escapia in a, a shorter amount of time than we thought. I'll give you an update about that. Please message us offline uh, if you have questions and we can talk more about that. Because there's several Escapia um, customers we, we really want to work with. Brandon had a question. Are there rates based off of Airbnb or HomeAway? Uh, are we able to input web links of other properties that may not show up on the dashboard? Um, I th the rates that we're pulling, it will um, we pull from a number of different sources. In most cases, these are going to be really similar across the board. You can see uh, on a number of listings, we are providing a link to the listing itself as well when you're clicking around on the map. Um, I think what you're saying is, can you? Uh, I'm not sure I understand the second part of the question, but you can search for listing names uh, when you're doing the filtering to find a specific listing. So if maybe you're coming from the other side where you already know properties that you look at, you can find them in the list of comps to add to your comp set by searching for them by the title of the listing. John, my guess is actually that question might be, let's say there was someone who uh, had a direct website. Could you input that URL or could you, could you, if you found a listing that wasn't in the comp set and your comp set, could you add it? The answer today is no. Um, if you, if you, you can flag it for us as there's a chance there could be an error. We might not be seen listening for some reason. So you can send it our way and ask us that question, but we do not have an ingestion for uh, kind of uh, different calendar types necessarily. Yeah. Um, Paul also asks, uh, what is best performing defined? I used that word quite a bit. And I would say that, the way best performing is defined is, is really defined according to your own strategy. So if you you and your owners are really looking for ADR as the primary KPI, then um, asking rate and nightly rate are going to be the best performing metrics for you. Um, in this portfolio, uh, you'll see that uh, the way it's been managed is that that doesn't tend to be the priority. The priority tends to be RevPAR. So uh, this portfolio's dashboard shows that um, asking a nightly rate tend to be kind of low, but RevPAR is very, very high because at the end of the day, uh, this portfolio is driving occupancy to make the most revenue and doesn't have the same limitations from owners or someone else. Um, so when you're considering best performing, that really has to be something that is relevant to your listings in your portfolio and what you're trying to get out of them. Yeah. And as you, as you um, another great area where we'd love feedback, right? If you explore the data a little bit and you find yourself having questions, everything you ask us informs how we can make a better product for everyone else too, right? So um, there's, there's one other thing I, I wanted to highlight that just launched on Wheelhouse this past week too, and it might be helpful and then, and then we'll let everyone run. And we're all always available via uh, hello at usewheelhouse.com. We're, you know, 24 seven chat as well. Um, so you might have noticed this little uh, icon 
appearing on a lot of pages and this just went live this week. And if I click on this, it'll actually open up Loom videos. Loom is a video recording site. And you'll be able to, uh, for example, watch Loom videos of how to use these different products. And, and these icons are actually appearing everywhere. So if I go back to the dashboard, you'll see now we're kind of helping people with onboarding a little bit more. I believe if I click into marker reports, uh, there should be some iconography here. I, I believe we've already extended this. No, maybe that's not quite live yet. So you'll be seeing that come to um, you'll be seeing that come to the market reports as well. Demo videos there. If I click into an individual listing on a calendar, you'll see demo videos as well. Even down to the individual settings level, you'll see a lot more videos. So keep your eyes out, and the comp sets are going to have these demo videos throughout. So you can click through and learn a whole lot more, both about the core wheelhouse product dynamic pricing, about market reports, and now comp sets as well. I guess. Market reports look like we, we need to add those, but uh, do keep an eye on those if you have more questions. Hopefully they help to answer some of the questions about um, these various tools that we put put at the door, but uh, when you do have questions, we love hearing from it. So, all right. Well, with that all, um, we really wanted to spend 45 minutes with you all. We sincerely appreciate you taking time to learn more. Hopefully you learned something fun or valuable or interesting today. John or Amelia, any other words of wisdom as a send off? Yeah, um, we're releasing this as a beta because we have a lot of data available to us and, and we really want to make it transparent. But, um, you know, we can anticipate a number of use cases, but it's not necessarily our job to just tell you everything. And we'd like to hear how you're using things. Uh, the reason this is in beta is because we're looking to see how people use it and then also adjust the product to be the best for the use cases that are most useful for you. So please give us some feedback. Um, as you use the product, feel free to ask us questions. Uh, you, if you've been in one of our webinars before or talked to us, we're, we're pretty friendly, I think. Last word to you. Absolutely. Um, I know we flew through a lot of really good, some complicated information. So if there's any area that you want to deeper dive on to slow down or even speed up, feel free to reach out. And we're always um, happy to chat through. And of course, always welcome your feedback and anything you're looking for. Um, we love hearing from you all. Excellent. Ron and Amelia, thanks so much for hopping on and helping explain this product. We really, really appreciate it all. Thanks for being great Wheelhouse customers. If you're new to Wheelhouse and want to learn more, reach out to us. Hello at usewheelhouse.com. We'd love to have you aboard. And we'll keep building great products faster the more feedback you all give us. So um, send it our way. And thanks so much. Thanks, all. Bye. Here's my camera. <laughs>